Tayyip Erdogan has officially won the second round of Turkey presidential election and will serve as Turkey president until 2028. Erdogan won by a five-point margin over rival Kemal Kılıçdaroğlu to get a clear picture on the Turkey presidential election. We're now connected via Zoom with a lecturer at the Department of International Relations, Faculty of Social and Political Sciences, University of Indonesia, Agung Nurwijoyo. Hello, Pa Agung. How are you today, sir? Hello, thank you. Uh, I'm fine. Thank you for inviting me. Thank you so much for joining us today. So, uh, Pa Agung, what are the lessons learned from uh, Erdogan's victory? Okay. Um, first of all, uh, I think it's all about Erdogan's leadership. Yeah. I think this 20 years, two decades under Erdogan, so many things have been happened. And Erdogan's, however, um, Experience, his experience in politics drive him as the strongest person and in, in Turkey today. And also this leadership drive the way of Turkey uh, today. Um, for example, in domestic and international challenges can be faced by the Erdogan administrative, I think. And the second one, I think, um, keep believing in democracy as a way of, of uh, political uh, contestations. Uh, in the Turkish society, it's relatively light rate, um, well toward domestic policies. And Erdogan and, of course, uh, his party, the AK Party, still hold on uh, tight this view about uh, his own, own democracy. And the third one, I think, is all about the vision. Um, Erdogan, with the vision of um, Turkey's 2023, builds a visionary narrative or of 100 years of Turkey that has been carried uh, since he came into the power. And, of course, this year, 2023, is the Turkey's uh, centenary. And the last one, I think, uh, what's something that lesson learned that we can uh, um, take from this uh, Erdogan's victory is uh, keep up with the transformative policy. Regarding to the issue of foreign policy, for example, um, Turkey shows itself to be much more um, adaptive in the uncertainty world. And we can still today, uh, Turkey as a friend of the United States um, and alliance with the Russia. And they, they can play well on at these two legs, I think. In your opinion, Pa Agung, uh, will there be any uh, changes or new policies that will be introduced by Erdogan on his uh, third term, Pa? Ah, okay. In general, I think efforts to create stability will be carried out. Yeah. Domestically, um, economic and social issues are, of course, uh, the main concern of uh, Erdogan after he uh, gets the power. Uh, domestic pressure, for example, on the weakening of lira, um, high inflation, job creation, if recovery after the earthquake, um, maybe those of the things that are the main concerns of the uh, Erdogan. And not only these things about the um, uh, economic issues, they have also tackled with the uh, problem with the social issues. There's a lot of problems that um, uh, we can face today, we can see uh, in the Turkey uh, today, for example, for to resolve the potential friction between the groups. Factors that uh, contributed to Erdogan's uh, victory over uh, Kemal uh, Kili Daroglu. Okay, frankly speaking, Erdogan's focus on what he did to Turkey's um, development uh, with tagline um, Doru Adam, Doru Zaman, or it means right man, right time, um, in many things that Erdogan's in, in under Erdogan's administration had been um, uh, established. For example, uh, industry level mega projects, uh, logistic development in the um, defense industry, um, and also um, how the Turkey is um, influenced uh, globally. Yeah, and Erdogan's um, also worked very hard regarding to the issue of earthquake relief in Turkey. He gained support massively on public, on the uh, people in 10 of 11 provinces impacted to the earthquake. And something also important to take into notes that uh, Erdogan's approach to his own um, counterpart, Sinan Oan. He is the presidential candidate who lost in the first uh, round. And in the second round, uh, Sinan Oan um, supported um, Erdogan. Yeah, he is the change maker, Sinan Oan. And Sinan Oan endorsed Erdogan, and this is impact to the, the rise of the nationalist uh, voters, I think. And I think this is the things also have a significant effect to, to Erdogan in the run of election. 
And um, in this election, however, uh, I understand that uh, candidates face the Turkish citizen who wants stability more than change. And there's a form of public distrust of the viability of the opposition, for example, to improve uh, the situation today. Pagun, can you explain to us uh, the differences between Indonesian and the uh, Turkey mm. election system? Okay, this is something interesting to be taking the notes here. That Turkey today has transitioned uh, to a presidential system since 2019 after previously using a parliamentary system. Of course, this is the second time of the President Erdogan has been directly elected by the people uh, in the new week. They have 7%. And presidential threshold in Indonesia, we have 20%. So parties need coalition in Turkey difference. Uh, they only need 5%. I think that's some of the um, differences between the election system in, in Turkey and in uh, Indonesia. Uh, last question, Pak Agung. Do you see any potential changes in bilateral relations between Indonesia and Turkey in Erdogan's third term of presidency, Pak Agung? Okay, I see uh, these things, yeah. Actually, uh, since 2019, uh, Turkey has a policy toward Asia regions. Uh, they name it uh, um, Asia, a new initiative has been, uh, it, it, it shows that Turkey is trying to turn its face to Asia, uh, especially Southeast Asia. And uh, under the Erdogan, I think um, there is a multi-level and multi-stakeholders needed as a part of cooperation between Indonesia and Turkey. For example, in some um, uh, bilateral uh, relations, for example, ITJPA, uh, in uh, Indonesia-Turkey um, Comprehensive Trade Economic Partnership, um, this is something possible to be much more uh, developed um, uh, regarding to the issue of these um, two countries' uh, relations. And besides that, I think um, cooperation uh, regarding to the issue of defense industry, issues of migrant workers, cultural exchange, scholarship, technical cooperation, there's a lot of things to be much more um, developed between these two uh, countries. And in addition also, uh, cooperation to enhance uh, the people-to-people -people context, also important things. And the last but not least, uh, the utilization of the identity of the similarities in Islamic uh, majority countries and also democratic countries is the point in the context. Thank you so much for your time, Pa Agung Norwijoyo. Have a good day, sir. Thank you very much for inviting me. Have a good day.